I am going to send this recording to the board afterwards so that um, they have a copy of it. Now, I don't know if they're going to email everybody this recording out. So if for whatever reason um, you want to 100% make sure that you get the recording, my cell number is on my nameplate, 905-903-5442. Just um, send me a text with your name and email, and I'll put you on a list to get the recording, which I'll have whatever. Um, in a couple of days, I guess. So if you want to make sure that you get a copy of the recording, uh, send me a text. And this even goes for, no, no, that doesn't make sense what I was about to say. So for those of you that are hearing me live right now, if you want the recording, send me a text message that just says that you want the recording with your name and email. And then um, I'm not going to spam you or anything like that. I'm just going to send you the email. So, okay, today's session is all about getting leads. So how do, how do we get more leads as a real estate team, as a real estate agent, as a real estate broker, somebody who's been in the business forever and ever, or as a brand new agent who's just getting started, we all need those fresh ideas and different, different ways of looking at things. And um, so to get started, I'm going to spitball a ton of ideas. Now, I'm not saying all of them have to work for you. In fact, some of them might not work at all because you just that's not your personality type. But others are going to uh, say like, damn, that's such a good idea, but I have my own twist. So whatever I say, I want you to twist it into your own reality of how you would actually implement these ideas. So the first one is kind of like out of the box thinking. And that was, um, I actually started a box business for people that were moving and I put together these box kits um, and I advertise them for free on Craigslist, Kijiji, Facebook Marketplace. And my mentality was if a person is in need of boxes, <laughs> there's a good chance that they're moving. And it basically became a, a profitable way for me to market um, for buyers and sellers. Now, some of them had already bought or sold a home and then they were getting the boxes after the fact, but there was a ton of them that were in the prep stages of doing this. So what I did was I found a, a, a box broker, a guy that just has a ton of boxes in a factory, and then I bought a transport truck load worth of them. It cost me about $2,000, something like that. Um, and then I started selling these boxes um, purely for the reason that I just wanted people to come to me and to talk about real estate. And uh, so that $2,000 that it cost me, I actually ended up doubling the money. So for what I paid for the boxes, I ended up getting a profit from selling the boxes. But then I was having all these conversations with people that were in, um, I'm from Durham region, Oshawa area. And so I had people from the Oshawa area, um, multiple people every week coming to get boxes from me. And uh, all I did was I just bought a ton of boxes and I, I put together a, a little deal where you could buy, I think it was like a kit of 10 boxes for uh, X number of dollars and people gobbled it up. And just in passing in conversation, when I'm like giving them the boxes, I'd be like, oh, you think I'm moving? Oh, funny chance, I'm actually a real estate agent. And it just, it was a way for me to get paid to prospect. That's how I looked at it. So I'm not saying all of you are going to do that. Most of you will not, but a couple of you will, and you're going to get paid to prospect. That's what I loved about that idea. So that one's not for everybody. I get that. Um, now I am a real estate coach. I coach real estate agents. I stopped being a real estate agent around 2012. I started in 2007. And then, um, so since 2012, I've been coaching full time. I bought a tour bus, which is this. This is a, a, a bus. And um, I basically moved to a new city every month. I hit the road in 2018. And I have not been home back since. I've basically been living on the road. And um, so I do coach real estate agents. And one of the clients that I'm working with, she had a brilliant idea where she did um, canvassing her neighborhood, so her farm area. And there's about 400 homes in this farm area. And what she did was she had her clients, uh, sorry, she had her son um, go up and down the street taking pictures of every property. And then they um, hand delivered a CMA to 400 homes. On the cover of the CMA was a picture, high resolution photo of their property. 
and people tune into what's in it for them. So if that's in their mailbox and they see a picture of their house, that's like a unique brand new photo that they've never seen before, they're going to have more interest than if it was like some sort of vanilla generic um, free CMA flyer. So on the cover was a picture of the property with the address of that property. And then the second page was just like a 12 month snapshot. It wasn't in depth as far as, hey, this is how much you can sell for. It was just a general of this is what's been happening in the area um, type of information. And then on page three of that CMA was like call to action. So one was about selling, one was about buying. And I think the third one for her was about joining the team. Um, but maybe the third one for you is about like connecting to your social media. Maybe the third one for you is about an event that you have coming up, whatever. Just put call to actions. I like the idea of having a menu of options because some people might not be selling, but they might be buying. Or they might not be buying, but they could be becoming a realtor and getting into the business. So it just creates conversation, ultimately. And um, so of those 400 CMAs, she ended up getting over 25 appointments. Um, she probably got even more. It was just that, that the last time I talked to her about it, she definitely had 25 appointments set in the books, date, time stamped. She's good to go to go talk to them about their property. That's pretty good, man, to get 25 listing. I wouldn't say it was 25 listing appointments. I would say it was 25 conversations about that property and, and what it could sell for. So of the 25, who knows how many she got, but let's just say even if it was six, which is a low number in my opinion. Well, if the industry average, if a typical real estate agent is selling about six homes a year, she just outpaced the whole industry with this one strategy. You know what I mean? That's just like one pillar. That's just one source of business. And it's a really good um, way to kind of kickstart things. It gets you face to face with conversations with people at the door um people will call you back and oh one thing i do suggest in today's day and age is any direct mail that you use if there's any outdoor media or um, print media you have if you have to put a qr code you cannot not use a qr code the the only good thing that happened with covid which nothing good happened with covid but the one thing that society did get used to was the idea of using qr codes it is way more easier for a, pe a person to understand, oh, I just have to open up my phone and open up the camera, and then I can click on this QR code. Back in the day, 2009 or 10, or whenever QR codes kind of came out, um, you had to download a specific app, and it was kind of nerdy, and people, they were ugly, and people just didn't like using them. Um, but now it's just like QR codes are everywhere, especially if you go to restaurants, it's on the table. Um, it, QR codes are way more adapted and used these days. So because of that, I would definitely be including a QR code on everything. An example. So that CMA that she handed out, and I told you on page three, you should have like three call to actions. Well, if I was to be creating it, <clears throat> I would have what looks like a video of each call to action and then a QR code to watch the video. And it would be a video of me explaining each one, explaining about the buyer process, explaining about listing their home or explaining about joining our team or explaining about the event that we're, we've got coming up and how to register. So you definitely wanna use QR codes as much as possible. My rule of thumb is if you're hitting print to physically print something, it's in the newspaper, it's in a magazine, it's like literally anywhere, you gotta be leveraging those QR codes. So the one universal rule that I have for absolutely everybody is um, you have to be calling your database. And so my big challenge when I first got into the business was like, I haven't talked to these people in a really long time. And now I'm a real estate agent. So now I'm supposed to all of a sudden be their friend and like just pick up the phone and, and Hey, I love your referral. I just felt like a loser. <laughs> I did not feel good picking up the phone and, and prospecting because like I was tuning into what's in it for me. So I had to adapt my mindset and change things up a little bit. And so I have um, a two-step process for anybody that wants to build and grow a database from scratch, like a clean one, 
or if you're a, a seasoned vet and you've been in the industry for a while and you admit that your database is big and messy and dirty, then maybe it's time for you to like segment the big dirty database into a smaller list of people that you know, like, and trust and would actually be inspired to pick up the phone and call. So my one, two step is this step number one. Oh, by the way, I'm going to give you this script. So if anybody wants the script from this, um, my cell number is here, 905-903-5442. Just send me a text and tell me that you want the database script. And then um, I already got a video on it and the script already typed out for you. So the script sounds like this. I, I pick up the phone and I call my database. So um, starting with the letter A and going down through the alphabet, I call Amy. Amy answers the phone and be like, hey, Amy, it's uh, Danny Wood over at ABC Realty. Hopefully I caught you at an okay time pause and let her answer. And if she says, yeah, I'd be like, awesome, Amy. So you can totally relax. I'm not expecting you to be buying a home or selling a home, but I do have something that impacts your area. And I just kind of wanted you to hear me out and play along for a second. So if you could guess, how many homes do you think sold in your neighborhood last year? Do you think it was like three, eight, 12, 20? And you can be totally wrong. Just take a wild guess. It doesn't even matter what number she says. If she says eight, I would repeat the number and say eight. Okay, so you would agree that's not a very overwhelming and spammy number because we have this system that what it does is it emails you all the activity just in your little pocket. And like you say, you might get eight of them a year. And I'm already setting people up to get this and it's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you anything. And what it does is it allows you to keep your finger on the pulse of the market that matters to you. And you're gonna see obviously um, the listings as they hit the market, but you're gonna see the house values of what they're going for. You're gonna see um, the home staging ideas that people are doing to properties similar to yours. You're gonna see the, the renovations that your neighbors have done through the photos and through the videos. And like eight a year, if that wouldn't be a bother, um, I wouldn't want you to miss out. So is it okay if I include you? And stop talking because people don't like that awkward long silence. So then she's going to fill in the gap and be like, oh yeah, that sounds awesome. Um, and then I would get her email. So I'd be like, okay, Amy, what's the best email? I'm going to jot that down. So she tells me her email. And, and then after I write the email down, I'm going to repeat it out loud because I want to make sure I have the right email because maybe it's a .ca and not a .com or the spelling of her last name is weird or whatever. So I just like literally say it out loud. And then um, I'll be like, awesome, Amy. So I got your email address now. I really want to dial this in for you. So what's your mailing address, like your postal code and everything? I want to make this hyper local to you. So now she gives me that information. So when we hang up the phone, from that one conversation in my database, I have name, phone number, email, and mailing address, which most realtor databases are so full of holes. It's like cheese whiz or Swiss cheese, I mean, where um, you've got like the name and the phone number or you don't have the phone number, but you got the email and like you got duplicate contents, contacts, and it's just a big hot mess. Well. With that conversation I just had, I was able to clean it up. I got name, phone number, email, and mailing address. So now that I have that information, when I hang up the phone, what am I going to do? Step one is add her to my database with all that updated contact information. Step two, pretend I came to you guys and said, hey, I want to buy a home in, in Burlington or Oakville. What would you do? You would say, okay, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, what price range? And you would get my criteria and then you would set me up as a prospect match. I don't know what tool you're using. Some of you are using your own website. Others of you are using like the, the, real, the board itself, um, the MLS. And so whatever, however you do that with your buyer clients, you would do the same thing for Amy. Only instead of all of Oakville, it would just be her pocket, her neighborhood. So a tight little, little radius. And now what happens is you've got them set up on a drip plan. Whenever a new listing hits that area, your service is going to automatically email it to them. It's uh, branded as you coming from you. It's real estate related and it, it's hyper local and relevant to that person. It's the best set it and forget it drip plan that you can do. And it doesn't cost you anything because you're already paying for that website that you've got or you're already paying for your membership dues to be able to set people up on a prospect match. So my mission would be to get absolutely everybody in my database set up on that because it, it's, it's, I'm not going to slam like 
cooking recipes that you email in a newsletter or fix your roof tips that you send seasonally. Like those are all great touch ideas, but this one be, trumps all of that because it's, it, it creates the content for you. It delivers it for you. And it's really relevant to the person. Like they get used to clicking. If Amy gets an email from me next week of like the new listing and she happens to click it, well, there's a good chance in the future when I send more listings, she's going to click, 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 because now she she's used to the habit and she's just like in on that. So I set her up as a prospect match. Then because I have her mailing address, I'm actually going to send her a handwritten thank you note with some swag. I'm going to put a notepad in there. I'm going to put magnets. I'm going to put a calendar, business cards, like whatever, but mail her something or mail him something. I personally really like notepads because one notepad has multiple touches. If you think about it, a notepad has what, say 20 sheets of paper on it. Well, that's 20 touches. That's 20 times for one thing that you mail them. That's 20, 20 additional touches that you're going to get out of it. So send them something in the mail. It's kind of like my rule one. If anybody comes to me as a, a client and they're like, Dan, I need help with my real estate business. What's the magic bullet? It's that. Now, the challenge is time. We're all short on time. So what I would suggest is if you just call three people a day, three a day, three a day, three a day, with that strategy, it, it's not overwhelming. It's not that taxing on your time. It's something that you could do as a daily habit. It's um, rewarding to have those conversations. And the reason I say three is because each conversation is probably gonna take you like 10, 15 minutes, okay? Well, as soon as you hang up that conversation, you're gonna to have to like add them to your database. That's like another five minutes and setting them up as a prospect match. That's like another five minutes. So collectively, if you do three people a day, in theory, that's gonna actually cost you about an hour of your time. Do you know how hard it is for me to get anybody to do anything for an hour a day consistently? It's like mission impossible. So that's why I don't want you to be calling, like burning yourself out and just trying to call your whole database in one day. It's not sustainable. But three a day, three a day, three a day, three a day, three a day is. And so if you do that plan over the next quarter, three a day, three a day, three a day, you'll have contacted your whole database. And then update the jet, your database, got all, all the contacts, names, phone numbers, emails, um, sent them some swag, sent them, like there's so much leverage in, in that opportunity. So the nosy neighbor script is step one. <laughs> okay, so step two is what's my next phone call about? Because I can't just call her once and think she's gonna send me referrals. I have to build that relationship over time. So what I ended up doing was becoming a professional fun haver, where every month I put something on my agenda that I could invite and include people on that had nothing to do with real estate. I just wanted to be their friend in the business. And so I set up things like goat yoga. I did um, a self-defense class where I hired a, a, like a, somebody who knows how to fight. It wasn't me. So I hired somebody else to come in and do a self-defense class for women. I did uh, stained glass making. We did a Segway tour downtown, um, golf lessons at the driving range. You know what I mean? Like just cool experiential things. The next one that I'm setting up is actually going to be in Vancouver because this is where I am right now. I'm going to do, um, it's going to be um, as the sun sets downtown Vancouver, uh, the, the skyline looks really cool because of all the buildings and we're right on the water. So I'm going to do a stand up paddle board tour with glow in the dark boards and a DJ. It's just an experiential thing that people absolutely love. So now that I have this experiential um, thing every month, I plan a different one. It gives me a fresh reason to call people. It gives me a fresh reason to call text people it gives me a fresh reason to email blast newsletter social media videos um, stories content it's just like it gives you that permission-based marketing that allows me to pick up the phone so i call amy back in say like next uh spring so i call amy back and i'm like hey amy it's danny here at abc realty uh did i catch you at an okay time she says yeah i'm like awesome amy so i don't 
know if you're even interested in golf or like golf, but we're going to do uh, golf, golf lessons at the driving range where you just pay for your own bucket of balls. And I've got a golf instructor who's going to walk up and down and tell us all how bad we are. And um, you can bring a friend. I don't even know if you'd be in on that. Is that something you'd be interested in? She's, let's just say she says no, because 90% of the people you call, either the date, the time, or the topic does not interest them. Great. I don't need to have everybody to come. I just needed to use that as a reason to get her on the phone and to be her friend in the business. The more I call Amy to include her on things, the more she's going to call on me in the future when the time comes. And I just get to have fun the whole time. You also don't have to be uh, paying for everybody. So when I did like the Segway tour and um, everybody had to like sign a waiver and, and rent a Segway, <clears throat> I didn't pay for the Segways. I just got a group deal and everybody pays for themselves. So you, it's not like a big client appreciation event where you got to be fit in the bill. No, it, it's just like an ongoing thing. And I even got to the point where I created a list so that when I did um, announce a new one, I just did a mass text to everybody. So doing the nosy neighbor strategy, calling your database, getting them set up on that first is my one. And then the two is then having an ongoing reason for why you're calling and re reconnecting with people. And I love the idea of just like not always being real estate. Some of the times we did do events for real estate, like buying your first home seminars. We did plenty of um, investing tours where I would um, get real estate investors to meet at our brokerage. And we would show uh, um, all the listings that are duplexes, triplexes, fix and flips and power sales. And we would even do a tour looking at four or six properties that same day. So I would call, let's just say four, four listings that are really attractive in, in my market that are um, either a duplex or a triplex, I would call the agent up and say, hey, we got a bunch of investors that are going to come through and do a tour. And we're looking at like four or five properties. And I just wanted to include yours. Um, would it be okay if I booked a showing? Um, and they all said, yeah, obviously. And I use that. I got um, Craigslist, Kijiji, uh, Ventbrite, um, Facebook. I would promote that as a monthly thing where people would come to our brokerage and do an investing tour. There's so many ways that we can get business from it. The cool thing, why I absolutely love real estate, um, <laughs> because uh, my parents were not, were not too keen on it at, at first, because they're like, we didn't pay for you to go to school for real estate. We paid for you to go to school for marketing. And I'm like, yeah, but like real estate is marketing. It just happens to be that's the product of real estate, but I'll still be doing the marketing. And um, it took a while for them to understand <laughs> my concept. But uh, real estate is definitely a marketing game. And we get to play in the sandbox and have fun. And so if you're not having fun, then what I would say is this. Joy is your internal compass. And you, if you're not having joy with what you're doing, then you're on the wrong track. Because the number one thing that we should all focus on is limiting our regrets because when we get older you don't want to look back and regret the fact that you didn't enjoy your job or the fact that you spent so much time doing something that at the end of the day when it's time for us to cross over you're going to think like man i really wasted my time on this one shot opportunity so if you're not having fun in your current state then uh, you got to shake things up and just lean towards fun okay so there's um, one, one thing we did uh, every summer was uh, hire a photographer to um, go to all of the, our properties, like our database, and take photos because um, this, this was a strategy. So we would call our database and say, hey, we've hired a photographer who's going to go around taking high-res photos of, of, our, of properties so that you have it for when you need it for uh, uh, mortgage renewals refinancing maybe you'll need it for insurance or maybe you list it in a year or so like you'll you, you definitely want good high-res photos of your property and uh, you don't want to take them in the middle of winter if the time comes that's when you sell or if the time comes that's when you need to refinance or whatever so it's absolutely free can we include you on that you don't even have to do anything 
thing. Our photographer is just going to show up to your curb and take exterior photos and then we'll email them to you. Pretty much everybody says, sure. Yeah. Like, why not? Well, it one again, it, we get to update our database because we have to send the photographer to that property. So we get the, the property address Two, we've got high res photos of that property now in our system. So it's like we're foot, one foot in the door for when they do need a realtor in the future. We've already got the photos and we're already in the business. Three, it gives you, it gives you a, a marketing touch at that time of the year. It gave us a reason to email everybody. It gave us a reason to call and text people. It, it just gave us a reason to connect. So that we would do once a year with people and um every year we would not recall the people we did last year but every year i get more internet leads every year i get more open house leads every more you get more referrals so your database is constantly growing and so we would constantly add the new people to the photography tour um one of the things that really launched me was um i was extremely young when I got into the business. So I think I was like 24, but I looked 12. <laughs> I looked really young. And so none of my friends were buying real estate at the time. And my family didn't even trust me because they knew me as like the kid. So why would they buy or sell a house through me? So I had to experiment with strangers. Now, I had to get out there and get conversations with as many strangers as possible. So my first logical step was, Google. If a person is in Oshawa, or in your case, Oakville, Burlington, um, if a person is in your area and they're searching real estate for sale, homes for sale, property for sale, clearly that's a person that you'll want to connect with. So I really liked Google Pay Per Click. There's a couple of campaigns that I found really worked for me. One was this. My thought was if all the Oshawa real estate agents are doing the same Google pay-per-click campaign for Oshawa real estate for sale. How is my ad going to outpace the rest of them? So what I did instead was I didn't target people that were searching Oshawa real estate for sale who were in Oshawa. I blocked Oshawa as a negative and I targeted the rest of Canada. If anybody else in Canada typed in Oshawa homes for sale, Oshawa property for sale, um, Oshawa Relocation Service, Oshawa Relocation Company, I was getting the people that were moving to Oshawa and no other realtor was doing that ad. So I didn't have, because um, Google pay-per-click is a bid where you bid one penny more than the person beneath you. And, um, but I didn't have anybody underneath me. Nobody else was doing it. So I was the lowest bid and it was very cheap and quality because most people know three realtors but a person in calgary who's moving to oshawa even though they, they know three realtors in calgary they don't know one in oshawa so it just enabled me to be able to get more business from people so that was one google pay-per-click campaign i really liked um the other one i liked that was local was if a person was searching anything to do with open houses like oshawa open house um i would do all the different franchises I'm not going to name names because we're all different franchises here. So anyways, I would do like ABC Realty Open House, XYZ Open House. So I would do the different company names. And the reason why I did open houses, I didn't even have to do the open house. I just did the marketing for open houses. So when a person did like Oshawa Open House or Oshawa Open Houses and they click on my ad, it took them to a landing page and the video was of me. And my video would sound like this. I'd be like, hey, it's Danny Wood over at ABC Realty. If you're looking for an open house this weekend here in the Oshawa area, what we can do is actually email you a list of all of the open houses. And on top of that, we can email you a list of all the homes for sale that don't have an open house, but we can get you in as a private viewing and it's absolutely free. So fill in the form below and you'll get the automatic list of all the open houses this week. And then I'm going to follow up with you about your criteria to set you up on that prospect match. What I absolutely love about um, targeting the open house is they're hopping into a car this week. So of all the internet leads that you could be paying for and going after, a lot of them aren't ready to move till next year. 
Well, the people that are doing open house searches, they're actually hopping in a car this weekend. So I just doubled down on the open house searches because I knew they were closer to the uh, timeline of actually making a move. So open house, pay-per-click is awesome. Um, we do that for people, by the way. If you're not adapt or able to or interested in running your own Google pay-per-click campaigns, um, we do that for agents as a service. Uh, the other one that tends to be working um, for a lot of people these days is Facebook ads based on your listings. So my strategy is this. We did it for, um, we came up with this during the era of newspapers. So there's an Oshawa newspaper, there's a Whippy newspaper, Pickering, like they each had their own newspaper. And so one thing I know is that um, the further away from Toronto you get, the cheaper the homes are. So Oshawa is cheaper than Whippy and Whippy is cheaper than Pickering, you know what I mean? And so what we would do in the newspaper time is um, we would advertise the Oshawa listings in the Whippy, Ajax, Pickering newspapers because it was a cheaper price. We didn't say that it was Oshawa. We just said um, brand new listing, uh, 300,000 back then. And people from Pickering were like, oh my God, where's this located? So they would call, they would text, they would email us. And so if you were to do Facebook ads, I would, I would suggest that same strategy. Don't be like super clickbaity. Um, just focus on logic. So I really only worked on the Durham region, Oshawa, Whippy, Pickering, Ajax, and, and Bowmanville. And anything outside of that area, I would refer out. In fact, even Pickering, I didn't even like Pickering because the closer to Toronto you get, the crazier the agents are. So I liked working on the outskirts. And um, so anyways, we would take the Bowmanville listing and advertise it in the like Whippy newspaper. Do that same thing with Facebook ads. Take the, if you were to do like a one hour radius or less, even tighter, I would do like 45 minutes or less. So take a 45 minutes of where you live, work and play. And what's the cheapest market in that bubble? Take one of those listings and then advertise it in that same radius, but whatever city is the highest price point. If you do that on Facebook, you'll be getting leads. Now, there's no such thing as a good lead. It's a, a two to 4% conversion rate, regardless of platform, regardless of who's running the ads, regardless, 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 it's a two to 4% conversion. So that means for every 100 leads that you get, there's a chance that you're gonna have two, two to four deals come from that. What that also means is that out of the 100 phone calls, 96 of them or 98 of them are no answers, they're rude, they, they're not looking, they're, they're dud leads, you know what I mean? So you, it's kind of like heartbreaking if you don't realize that, um, but it is a numbers game. And that if you were to run Facebook ads, then um, that would be my strategy. And it's one that I implore you to, to look at. Um, if any of you do farming, geographic farming, then um, I have a webinar series I did. I, I took six agents that are absolutely killing it. And when I say killing it, I mean like they're the top agents in the world. Um, and they really focus on farming. And so I did a six, six interviews with six people, one hour each, which is six hours of content. What I then did is I took all the best ideas out of those six hours, and then I put it into a smaller webinar of just like the best stuff. So if any of you are thinking of like doing farming or, or you currently are farming, um, I have a whole one hour webinar. It's already free. It's recorded. Just send me a text message and just say you want the farming, the farming video. And I'll send that to you. But if you are doing farming, um, one thing I do suggest you look at is um, Google. There's a Google banner network. And within that Google banner network, you can actually target your postal code. Whereas if you do Facebook ads, you have to target not only the, that postal code, but the whole city, plus like a 16 mile radius around it, which is crazy. If you are running a farm, then and you're doing door knocking, you're doing direct mail, you're doing that sort of thing, then you're going to want to look at doing um, Google banner ads. Um, we're doing it for clients. It's $50 a month is what the cost is. And on average, you'll get 20 to 60,000 impressions a month, which is really good. Because like, how much would it cost you to get 20 to 60,000 impressions doing direct mail? A lot more than 50 bucks. 
So Google banner ads, I don't suggest to most agents. I say it's a waste of money because it's 100% a branding play. But if you're already doing door knocking, if you're already doing direct mail, if you've already got billboards, you're doing community involvement, then it's a no brainer for 50 bucks to get 20 to 60,000 impressions a month. Um, you do that through Google, the Google banner network is what it's called. And um, yeah, I definitely suggest though some of you might want to look at that most of you not um ah okay so there's one thing we would do once a year is we would take all of our old internet leads and we would every spring in the new year we would do a mass email blast um Assuming you've got permission to do that, assuming that people opted in on your website and clicked off the little box that it's okay for you to communicate with them. Okay. So I'm just going to assume that's already happened. If that did happen, then we pull the list of all those people from last year that are internet leads. And then we send them an email and it literally says this name. Do you plan on still moving this year? That's it. We don't put any photos. We don't put any videos. It's just plain black and white text. And it has their name. So Dan, Amy, Steve, Samantha, are you still planning on moving this year? If you do that email blast to a list of 100 people or 1,000 people, there is a chance you're going to get a bunch of them replying. Even if you don't get a bunch, maybe you get six or five or one. You only get one. One is better than what you had before which was zero if you didn't do this. And it doesn't cost you anything. So I definitely suggest you do that once a year, um, email blasting it. Um, there is a free source of business. Um, Craigslist and Kijiji has a section um, of homes for rent. So what, what I used to do was um, look at all the homes for rent in Durham region, and I would call up the landlord. The landlord answers the phone. I say, hey, Joey, landlord, I noticed you got a home for rent. Is it still available? And he or she would say, yeah. And I'd be like, awesome. So I am a real estate agent and I totally appreciate that you're marketing the home for rent on your own. I was just curious, would you be open to the idea of me casting a larger net? What I want to do is I just want to bring you offers for sale. You don't have to accept any of the offers that I bring you. Um, there's no upfront cost but would you at least be willing and open to looking at um, offers for sale on this property? Have you ever considered what this house could even sell for? And then just stop talking. A lot of the landlords don't wanna be a landlord anymore. A lot of landlords think it's time to cash out. A lot of landlords are done with this whole COVID thing and, and tenants not paying broken toilets. A lot of them just don't wanna be in it anymore. And so it was like a free source every week Every week, every week, every week, there's more and more listings getting put up for rent. And I just call them with that conversation. Now, some of the landlords would block me and they'd be like, no, I buy and hold. I'm never selling. I love being a landlord. For them, I would shift gears and be like, hey, that's awesome, man. Since you love being a landlord so much, I'm sure you wouldn't want to miss out because we have this newsletter that goes out every month of all the duplexes, triplexes, the fix and flips and the power sales locally here. And uh, would it be okay if I at least included you on that? That way you can be informed on what's happening in the market. It doesn't cost you anything. And I mean, you'll get one email a month. Um, so it won't be too overwhelming or spammy. Is it okay if I include you so you don't, so you don't miss out? A lot, of them, a lot of them said, yeah. And so when I first started doing this, a lot of realtors were telling me, oh, Dan, you don't want to work with investors. They, they don't have, they have no loyalty. And I was like, that's awesome, man. I got a chance. <laughs> that's the way I looked at it. And the other thing was for every one investor I add to my database, so say I add hundred investors to my database, that's actually 200 properties, the one they live in and the one that they're renting out. So now I have a a, a pool of property that is going to life happens. People move, people get divorced, people relocate, people, people, people have their own stories. So if I, the more people I get into my database and conversation, the more life just takes care of itself and things just naturally fall in your lap. But if you don't have that database built, of course the phone is crickets because you don't have, you don't have that infrastructure set up. 
So I really liked calling uh, landlords and, and like going to their properties and, and connecting with them because it, for all the reasons that I just stated above. Um, the other thing was calling for sale by owners. So I would call for sale by owners, but all the other real estate agents are using the same scripts, the same tactics, the, the same story. They sound like robots. No offense. If you're doing it, keep kicking ass. I hope, I hope it's winning for you. But for those of you that like, like the idea of calling for sale by owners, um, but you don't do it, maybe this, this strategy would work. So I call it for sale by owner up and he answers the phone. I'd be like, Hey, Joey Fisbo, I noticed you got a home for sale. Is it still available? And of course he'll say, yeah, cause he's a Fisbo. And I'd be like, awesome, Joey. So, um, I am a real estate agent, but unlike all the other real estate agents that are calling you and, and probably hounding you to get the listing, I actually want to see if we could help you out on the buying side. I'm assuming if you sell that roof over your head, you're going to need another one. So if, if you were to move, where would you move to next? Oshawa or Whitby? And I put the words in their mouth. It forces them to correct me. I give them a choice of two things. Where would you move to? Oakville or Burlington? Like just whatever. I just put Oakville or Mississauga. I just put the words in their mouth and it forces them to correct you. And they'd be like, oh no, never Oshawa, Whitby. Oh, okay. So like how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms? Because as a buyer agent, you don't, actually even pay my fees this is totally free for you to work with me as a realtor and um first step first i'd love to set you up on that prospect match so how many bedrooms how many bathrooms i'll um, put together a list and now we got a conversation going so on the first phone call when i call that for sale by owner i'm not even talking about listing their property because they've already got a million agents that are calling them with the same story so i'm going to not go at that dance I'm going to go at another angle and have a real conversation with a real person and then build a relationship. And then in time, maybe a week, maybe a couple of days, maybe next month, like go harder on getting the listing, but not on the first phone call. The first phone call, I want to be their friend in the business. There's no cost. There's no risk. There's all reward for working with me. So calling the for sale by owners every week, you got a fresh list. I'm telling you, I could be a brand new agent in any city, in any market, and I would have business the next month with very little cost. There's only, there's two things that we leverage, our time and our money. So for most people, you should be leveraging your time because obviously the cost is high and you don't want to be paying for things. So if you focus on making these phone calls, getting, getting face to face with landlords. You know what I mean? All these ideas I just shared with you, at least a couple of them have to stand out as a possibility for you. Okay. Um, if you're wondering what I'm looking at here, I just wrote out a laundry list of my ideas. So I'm, that's what I'm doing. Um, oh, the door knocking. That's right. Okay. So I wanted to buy a property in Oshawa that would uh, be cash flow positive as a rental. And that was 2014. Um, and nothing was on the market. It's even harder now because the prices are so ridiculous. But anyways, back then, um, it, it was really hard for me to find something that would be cash flow positive. So what I did was I pulled a list of all the homes that were ever for sale, but never sold that, that would have been cash flow positive. Then I didn't go to that house specifically because that's like against everything. You're not allowed to do that. Um, however, I, I didn't see any problem with, with door knocking that whole neighborhood, knowing in the back of my mind that if that home would have fit the criteria, maybe others in that same pocket would fit the criteria. So I had an eight and a half, 11 sheet of paper with a picture of me, my wife and my dog. And then a story of who we were and why we wanted to buy a home in that area. And um, I ended up buying two houses from it in the first month. The first one fell apart because of um, a home inspection. The second one we ended up keeping. And um, so anyways, going door knocking with that strategy worked out so well for me personally. I started doing it for all of our clients. And um, so say I door knocked six streets that day. On I had six stacks of paper. Each stack of paper had the uh, a map of the area that I was door knocking. 
because in our in North America, we read left to right, top to bottom. Okay. So the very first thing on the piece of paper at the top left of the piece of paper is the map of their street. Why? Because people tune into what's in it for them. If that's the first thing that they see when they pick up the garbage, they're at least tuned into what's in it for them and it creates interest. Now, who's this photo of this couple and a dog and what's the story about? It looked handwritten. And um, so anyways, I started doing going door knocking for our buyers. And I would, if I door knocked six streets, I had six different sets of paper, each one having a map of the street that I was door knocking because I wanted people to tune into what's in it for them. Um, I have this as a template that all of you can have, by the way. You do need Canva Pro to be able to edit it. Um, but if you have Canva Pro, I've already got this door knocking letter done and saved and typed up. So just send me a text at the same number, 905-903-5442, and I'll send that to you. It's it's free. And um, so anyways, the uh, this was my, my story. So I, I go and I knock on the door. And as soon as I knock on the door and they open it, I take two steps back to create breathing room and trust because nobody likes a guy at their door knocking on it. Um, now I'm probably like easier to talk to than like a big burly man if you're like a a, a big bigger realtor um you might be scary looking i don't know i so anyways whoever you are just knock and show them that you're stepping back um so i step back and then i say hey i don't suspect that you're thinking of moving or not but we really want to buy a home in this area and i pull out the map and i start tapping on it now they look down at this map because they're looking down now they've made the connection of like intrigue of like what's this about it's got a map of my street because they're looking at it and thinking those thoughts they're no longer looking at me and listening to me so i clap the paper and i cover it and that brings their attention back up to me and i'm like no no this is for you to keep in case you think of anybody after after you steer me off in another direction do you know anybody in this area that's that's thinking and making a move because we're really trying to be proactive here now i just gave them full permission to get rid of me because I did that, it creates way easier conversation. I never had a negative experience. I never had a, um, it was hands down the best lead generator that I did. Um, for every one hour that I door knocked, I would get two appointments. And that's not an exaggeration. I tracked the numbers and that's how what it worked out to. We ended up buying houses privately because we got them before they hit the market. Our clients were getting, it was just a win-win for everything. So that door knocking script, 100%, I encourage you to do it. I mean, it is getting crappier weather weather out. Um, so you might want to like shelf that for the new year or like spring, fall, summer next year. But I'm telling you that that strategy works so well. Um, and so every time we had a new buyer, we didn't do it if we didn't have a buyer. So it, you have to come from integrity like you have to have a real buyer who's actually buying in that area and if you do the benefit to you is that it gives you all the confidence in the world because you have a real story and it's not about you so otherwise what when you go door knocking for any other reason of like hey we're just doing free cmas or whatever it um it doesn't work as well unless you're that girl that's doing it in her farm because she's already got that mind share she's already got that trust and goodwill and community involvement so if you've got a farm area just doing generic door knocking is a win but if you don't do geo farming and you just go out there door knocking you're going to feel like you wasted your time unless of course you have a real reason and a real story with real people and so i definitely encourage you to do that if you want a copy of my template just send me a text I put my uh, cell number in the chat. Everyone, 905-903-5442. That's my cell number. You can just click to call. I'm not going to answer right now because I'm on a webinar, but um, send me a text if you just whatever. I want the door knocking script. I want the um, everything I've talked about. Just tell me what you want and I'll send it to you. Um, when was the last time? on Instagram, you did a story poll. Most of you probably have never done it. And um, so do it today. Just do a st Facebook story, Instagram story, and you can do a poll and you can ask questions. And one of the questions could be, are you thinking of moving next year? Or are you thinking of moving this year? Just, just ask the question. Maybe you only get one. 
fine. One is more than none, right? What do you got to lose? The, the Facebook story, Instagram story, they they disappear within 24 hours. So I'm not saying you want to do it every day, but maybe once a quarter, just throw it out there and just see who, who does. Um, <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to leave off on um, a couple tools that I want to share with you. One is on your phone. Okay, if you're iPhone related, then um, it's called Moxie Messenger. So if you have an iPhone, you 100% need to buy the Moxie, M-O-X-Y, Moxie Messenger app. If you're not on iPhone, Moxie Messenger doesn't work on Android. So what you're going to want to search in the Google Play Store would be um, text scheduler or SMS scheduler. So what Moxie does, what it enables me to do is better lead follow-up. Because the challenge with lead follow-up is the fact that you, you're driving, you got a, a call come in, it's a sign call or an internet lead from realtor.ca or whatever. So you call the people and uh, they're not ready now, but they want you, you want to touch base with them in two weeks, three weeks, next month, that sort of thing. Well, the challenge becomes, okay, now you got to log into your CRM. You got to set them up as a, a profile. Then you got to like put a date time reminder and all of that. It's just like way too many steps and way too much clicking. Why I like Moxie Messenger is because I just got off the phone with the person. So I have their phone number. Right. So I just copy the phone number, open up Moxie Messenger and type up a message. I'll be like, hey, Steve, it's Danny Wood here at ABC Realty. We were talking a couple of weeks ago about you making a move. And uh, you said you're going to be away with the kids. And I was just checking if you got back and um, if we could connect next week. And then I schedule that to go out in two weeks or three weeks or whatever the time has to be. Um, now, what's awesome about Moxie Messenger is that in two weeks or in three weeks, it's going to remind me and say, hey, you wanted to send this text to Steve um, today. Do you still want to send it? And I'll open it up. I can edit it if I want to, or I can just hit send. And when you hit send, it comes from your cell number. I didn't have to set them up as a prospect. I didn't have to set them up as a contact. I didn't have to set anything. And the fact that it reminded me of the text, it reminds you to pick up the phone and to call them. It's just such an easy, foolproof way for you to not drop leads in the cracks. <sighs> okay, five minutes. That was good timing. <laughs> Hopefully you guys got value and at least one idea. Can I, can I get it? I just want to see the comment section light up if you're alive and here with me. Just like what idea stood out to you? And um, Type out your cell number or your email when you do that. And then uh, I'm going to um, email each person with like a resource or go deeper with you on each one. So maybe you like the door knocking. Maybe you like the box thing I did. The first thing, the first idea I came up with. Maybe you like the, the uh, door knocking letter, whatever. Tell me what it is that stood out to you and then put your like uh, cell number or your email, one of the two. That way I can uh, send you more resources that fit in alignment with what you want to go deeper on. Now, if any of you happen to be a part of a real estate brokerage, as far as like the training education committee, or you're part of um, a, another board or association that's in real estate and you need a speaker, this is what I do. I travel full time and I speak full time. So if you ever need a speaker, I would love to participate, whether it's just like this and we do a Zoom session or I get to come and do it live with you. That would be awesome as well. So if you're in that role or capacity, reach out because maybe we can do something in the future together. And if any of you are interested in like the done for you marketing where we do Google ads for you or we do Facebook ads for you, um, let me know that and I would love to connect. So. I love all the comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm going to figure out how to get a transcribe of all these comments. I've never done that before. Save chat. Okay, cool. All right, I'm gonna save this chat. I'm gonna email you all, text you all based on whatever you just said here. And um, if any of you are watching a recording in the future and you're like, oh, I can't chat, but I still want like help or to go deeper, 
Um, same thing, just send me a text message, whatever you're watching this video next week, next month, next year, I'll still be here, all right? Okay, I wanna wave goodbye and say thanks everyone. <laughs>